Hi guys and welcome back to Victoria's Creations where we are crafting for passion, love, and of course memories. Welcome to my crazy little crafting world. So today I actually want to do something that I have not done before. I want to create, and I've already created one, I want to create gifts for the teachers. Zoom in on there so you can see that. Teachers bake smart cookies. As most of you know, my day job is a teacher, and this year I actually wanted to break out of the Cricut, get me some cookie dough and some spatulas and some pot holders and make some presents for my fellow teachers. So come join me while we create up some goodies for the teachers, because let's face it, we deserve them. Before beginning this project, you want to make sure that you have everything that you need. You're going to need your heat press. You're going to need your pot holder. Have, get one that has the pocket in it. And I have, I got mine from Dollar Tree and it is 100% polyester. So if you can get a different color than black, then you can also do infusible ink. Um, when I first, when I ordered these, black was all they had, so that's what I got. I got, like I said, I got them from Dollar Tree, so they were a buck a piece. Very affordable. I got my sugar cookies. Um, they didn't have much of a selection at Dollar Tree on, and I did check the, the expiration date, but they didn't have much of a selection on the cookies. They did have peanut cookies, but I do know that some people have peanut allergies, so I just, I don't know if we have anyone, so I didn't want to take that chance. So if you do decide to make this project for someone you know, make sure if you choose peanut cookies that they don't have a peanut allergy. And if you're not sure, always err on the side of caution and get sugar cookies or chocolate chip cookies or something like that. And you don't need to, but I just thought that mine looked really cute with two of them in there. So, and I got these from Dollar Tree as well. I will also be using my Cricut. I also have the iron on foil. This is what I use. I have the paper studio. Um, it's just what I saw. It was on sale at Hobby Lobby when I bought these. They go on sale every so many weeks. I got the... It's a red, oh, it just says red, red foil is the iron-on brand, the iron-on kind that I received. It's the red foil iron-on in Paper Studios, and it works very well. I also have my weeder and my Cricut to be able to cut my pattern on. So let's go ahead and head over to Design Space and get to creating. Once in Design Bundle, you want to pull up your image. To do that, you can either select from different projects by clicking on the project, or you can create right in Design Space if you have something that you want to create and do up yourself. Or if you're like me and you've seen an image or a design that you liked somewhere else and you purchased it, it's time to upload it if you haven't already. So what we're going to do is go ahead and upload and you upload your image by clicking the upload button. That's going to bring you to your upload files. Click on upload and browse. Once here you want to find where your image is located and I keep mine on because I have so many different images. I keep mine on a external hard drive. And I have the Mega Pop Bundle uh, holder bundle that I got from um, Design Bundle. And I will link that below in the description. So these are my options. And I could choose one or two I want to, because I'm a teacher giving to another teacher, I don't want to do one that says how sweet it is to be taught by you or thank you for making me a sweet cookie or trying to earn boni, uh, brownie points because that would be something that a student would give to a teacher. Now I could do teach, bake, and repeat. I wanna upload that one. And when you upload it, you have this image and because it's an SVG already, you just hit upload. 
once you have the image that you want you just click on it and you'll notice there's a green box around it and down here next to the cancel and add to canvas buttons is a little circle with your image there if you click on the X in that it's going to take it out so if you accidentally click on one you decide yeah I really don't want that then you can exit off of it and it will add it to the canvas but I'm going to add teach bake repeat and I have it takes a big heart to shape little minds because some of the pot holders that I'm going to give they're to staff members they're not teachers but it still takes a village so when they come on your canvas, you're going to see that they're all in one spot and you'll want to separate them. The size of the area for the pot holders is a five by four and a half. So when you click on here, what I, I do is I like to un- I need to click on the lock that unlocks it and that way you can shape it however you want because if I kept it locked and I put five in for the height I'm sorry for the width then it's not going to be exactly 4.5 and I'm kind of one of those I want to fill in the area so I want it to be exactly 4.5 and that gives us a perfect 4.5 I like the way that looks. There's not really anything that I want to do to take away from it or add to it. I think that looks really cute the way it is. And now for the teach, bake, repeat, I'm going to change that. Let me lock that back up just in case because I have a habit of sometimes messing with things that I shouldn't be messing with. So we're going to make this a five by four. Oh, I didn't unlock it. There we go. Change that again. A 5 by 4.5. Uh oh. And now we have two. So, right now I have my project set on my Joy, but I don't have the iron on set up for, I don't have the vinyl or the iron on for a Joy. I have my big rolls, so I have to change this to my Explore Family. And once I have it set up as the Explore, then I need to go in and attach. And I do attach because if I do weld, then I can't, once I save this project and exit out of it, I can't unweld it. Whereas with detach, I can detach it. And what this does is it keeps it in its nice little box. So whenever I click the make it, it should show up. There we go. And I like to separate mine because it's just easier to cut it with a pair of scissors. So now that I have it exactly how I want it, I've got them separated so that it's easy for me to cut it. I know exactly how much... Just five inches is all I'm really going to be using. I can hit continue. Select my device. My Air. My Cricut Air. And yes, I have a, the Cricut Explore Air. And once it connects, and sometimes it takes it a minute. Sometimes it's quick and sometimes it just takes it a minute. And once I have... It's set up. I have to choose my material. And if it doesn't show up here, then I would just click Browse All Material and type in what material I'm using. Now I'm using the foil iron on. Ooh, I need to make sure the mirror is on, and I didn't do that. So let me go back to the edit and turn my mirror on. I love that it does that because if it hadn't reminded me to turn my mirror on, I would have completely forgot and I would not have been able to, I would have been able to use it. It would have just been backwards. And then I, I select more. I always select more just to make sure I have what I need. Mirror is on and Got my materials. Now I just need to load up my mat. Brand new mat. Wow. 
That looks so much better than the old mat. <laughs> Trying to make sure you got them funky, guys. There we go. Oh, yeah. Not going to have that problem again. That is sticking good. I want to get all the air bubbles out because that can cause problems. There we go. Check that out. That looks so good. All right. We're going to load it again. And restart it. release and that is done now we get to weed the fun part okay so before i take my vinyl off of the mat before i weed anything i'm going to get my easy press set up and ready to go so i go to the cricut heat guide and i put in my information and it tells me what i need to set it on and i need to set my mat on um, my easy press for 295 for 30 seconds and i need to preheat for five seconds before i start so i want to go ahead and set the temperature so it can be warming up and doing this thing so I'm going to press temperature. I see it's flashing. Oh, and I already have it at 295. Perfect. And then I just hit temperature again. Green light tells me it's ready to go. I already have my 30 seconds on there. But before I get started, I want to go ahead and weed. Before I weed, I want to set it up to where I can just cut out where my vinyl is. I want to be a little, I don't like this. You know, I don't like wasting anything. Call me strange. It's just me. But I don't, unfortunately, I don't see anything. that I don't have my rulers handy. Guys, I kid you not, over Thanksgiving break, I cleaned up my office and moved things around. And now I can't find anything. I will be so glad when I have my studio done and I can use that. You know what I can use? I don't know why I didn't think about it. It's my old, my old mat. I can use that as a, as a line. Sometimes we all have those moments, right? And I'm just going to draw a line so I know that this is where I can cut it. And that is a straight. Well, it may not be straight when I get done cutting it, but straight enough. And now I can take it off and I'm going to cut it back. I don't want to put it too close to my easy press because well let's face it that probably wouldn't be the smartest thing for me to do i do love how easily these mats bend to make it easy to take things off and i learned the hard way that when you are done with your mat your your whether it's your standard grip or what it's best to put that protective sheet back on it because otherwise there's no telling what's going to end up on it. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut with my scissors. Like I said, straight line, not straight cut, but that's okay. I'm not really wasting and that makes me happy because I have quite a few of these to make before it's all said and done. Go ahead and take that off. And 
now to just weed it out. And this is actually the easy part to me. Because set on the, when I put it on the more, it seems to cut it really, really easily. And I like that. You do have to be careful though because it does tear easily as well. So you wanna make sure that if it does tear, it's tearing somewhere where it's not gonna affect your image. And if it gets to be too much, you can't see what you're doing, you can always cut. My teacher bell goes off. <laughs> you can always cut out what you don't need. All right, now I'll get into all the tricky places. We got a little apple in here we need to cut out. Or not cut out, but pull it out. And there is a little leaf in there. And sometimes my little old fingernails make it hard for me to grab things. So I have to break out the tweezers. I want you guys to be able to see too, but I have a bad habit of taking everything out of this green. And I hope I'm not doing that. Uh, love the tweezers. Let's make a pile. There's nothing in the tea, had to make sure. And this is a totally different font. I knew that. I almost forgot that. All right, so that one is done. Teach, bake, repeat. And now for the next one. Takes a big heart to help shape little minds. Perfect. If you don't have one of these mats, you can easily get a um towel and fold it up. I like my mats because they're level for the most part. I don't have to worry about stuff like that except for in these areas, I don't want to be on the the seam where it laps over or on the sides. I want to make sure I have it in the right spots. 
have a lint roller. Don't know where it's at. Lint rollers are good to use if you know where yours is at. Brand new. Haven't used it yet. Don't know where it's at. It'll be okay. So the first thing I got to do is I got to heat it up or preheat for five seconds. And so I just take my easy press and set it on there for five, four, three, two, one. And what that does is just draw out all the moisture. Now I'm going to take and place my design. on there and I actually have some heat transfer tape and what this does is it helps to hold your image in place so it doesn't slide around I want mine to be about right there so I'm gonna Get my fingers to work. That one there. Now we'll put another little piece. Make sure it's flat. All right, guys. Now, time to press. For 30 seconds and I have my timer going and I'm going to put some pressure there we go on it because it does have some seams around it so I want to make sure that I get it to the best of my abilities lift it straight up and then when that cools we'll take it off so I'm going to set that one to the side and grab my next one. I'm gonna go ahead and get my heat tape ready. I will say if you have the easy press and you don't have the pad, it's a great investment. It really, really is. I am so beyond thankful that I have it. So another five seconds. Get all that moisture out of there. Four, three, two, one. And now we put teach, bake, repeat. Set it up about right, right there. That looks good, I think. Some tape on it. It's a little bit warmish. All right, next 30 seconds. The straight up, so it's the side, I'm gonna turn it off. I don't wanna to touch the bottom of it because that's gonna be hot. But it's not too bad, a little warmish. Take that off to cool. All right, so all right, it takes a big heart. Is cool, so let's pull this up. And you just want to be very mindful that your image isn't coming up with it. And that looks really nice check that out and i love the way it just shines it takes a big a big heart to help little minds help shape little minds once that is done you put your cookies in there and you put your spoons in now i did notice that they don't stay standing up as well in there they kind of sink to where you almost can't see what it says so probably before I give mine out as gifts I'm probably gonna put a little bit of tissue paper at the very bottom to kind of help it stand up a little bit because I want mine to stand out a little bit kind of like that 
that's still a little warm. And if you ever have to reapply the heat because it didn't stick as well, you wanna put the plastic covering back over top of it because otherwise it's not gonna do as well. All right, so let's give this one a shot. That is cool to the touch. I'm gonna peel that up. That's coming off there really nicely. Beautiful. Teachers got teach, bake, and repeat. Teach, bake, and repeat. Inserts. Inserts. And voila. How stinking cute, right? Now I only have about. I don't know, close to 50 more of these to make and then I'm done, right? So I really hope that you enjoyed the little tutorial on how to make these really cute little teacher gifts, whether you are a teacher yourself or you have a student of your own and you would like to make some of these up for your your child's teacher. They would absolutely love it. I am, I 100% guarantee you, teachers love things that are cute and we love things that are sweet. That's just what we do. We love it. So I hope that you are inspired to make some of these of your very own for your own uh, teacher friends. Or if you like, there are other designs out there that are not just for teachers that you can make for friends, family, and coworkers. Keep on crafting. And remember, as always, have a blessed day until next time.